Kong Riders. Now, welcome to the last fly in this series. Today, we're going to do a blue quill spinner. And if you're new to here, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give this a thumbs up, comment. I love comments. And make sure you share this with all your friends. Especially with videos like this, because this is another fly original to here. I tied this from pictures. And I'll show you the picture right here. Okay, so that's the picture I looked at to come up with the fly. Um, so you won't catch this video anywhere else. Make sure you tie these up. And wait till the end of this video. I will tell you why you have to have these with a story from us. So make sure you stay to the end for that. Let's get to the vice. Oh, before I get to the fly, I want to share one thing with you. There's two tying tips in this video towards the end that you're not going to want to miss. It's just great ideas and tying techniques. So, see you at the end of the video. You and me We meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free We're going to start this fly by debarbing the hook. Make sure you debarb your hooks. You never know when you're going to get one in your finger. And it'll be a pain to get out. So I always debarb my hooks. Now we're going to start by tying some really dark brown thread on. And we're going to run it the whole length of the hook. Now we're going to use some light tan organza and we're going to just pull, I don't know, three or four strands of organza out and use that as a tail. I'm going to measure that for the length of the hook. Now I'm using organza for both the wing and the tail of this fly and I'm going to tell you why. The last year, well, I'll tell you what. I'll wait to the end of the video. So you stay in the end of the video and I'll tell you why I'm using organza and what we found out last year. Now we're going to take some really light tan tying thread and we're going to double it up and tie it in two pieces, two strands of the tying thread. You notice you're starting to build up a little bulk on the body here by tying all this in, which is good because all we're going to use is that tie, that dark brown tying thread for a body. So you want to start cigar shaping that into a cigar and making your body. I, now you got to take that other fly tying thread you put in, the light tan, and you're going to twist it up so it makes a really tight twist on it, and you're going to use that as ribbon. And you're going to rib that all the way up to about one quarter the length of the shank of the hook.
Now you're going to take more of that organza and you're going to pull, you can only pull about three or four strands of this out, otherwise it gets all knotted up. So you unpull three out, lay them down, pull three out, lay them down, pull three out. The tool when I put them together had about an eighth of an inch wide stack of these organzas. Then I'm going to take them and I'm going to fold them in half. So now you got about a little, about a quarter inch of, uh, of this organza and you're going to tie that in and you're going to figure eight it on top of the hook, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, you know, like that around the wing. So it's, and make sure it stays on top of the hook. Now we're going to take uh, fine dry fly dubbing, black, and we're going to just put just a little bit on the string, big, like I always say, just enough to make it black, string black, very little bit. Now you're going to put it a little bit behind the wing, and then we're going to take that dubbing and we're going to go, like we figure eight, when we go over this way, then we go back over this way, we're going to do that with the dubbing. So right on top of that wing, there's a little ball of uh, dubbing on top of the wing. And then we'll put a little bit in front of the wing and then form a little head right behind the eyelet and uh, whip finish it. Okay, y'all made it to this point and I'm going to tell you. I took a piece of straw and just cut a little piece of straw out. Then this is the secret that everybody should know because this is amazing how this has helped. And I learned it from a pro tire, famous pro tire. Then you take that straw, slip it up over the fly, and that'll hold all your wings. And um, I just learned it. I now we're gonna try it on the mer next emerger pattern we tied too. And It'll hold everything back so that you can whip finish it without anything being in your way. It's a pretty cool trick and I love it and then now you guys know it. Okay, here's the second trick. I'm cutting these wings, I took a piece of paper, as you can see here, and I put a little mark. I measured the shank of the hook length and put a little mark on this piece of paper. Now I can use this piece of paper to gauge my wing, how long I want my wings to be. It's another cool little trick that I've, this one I just thought of. It's, I don't know, maybe everybody's been doing this forever, but. I just thought of it and I was like, yeah, I'll share it with everybody. So this is another way to measure your wings and it really works out really pretty cool. I like this idea and uh, I like the last tricks. So these are two fly tying tricks you can use. And even you guys have been tying for 30 years to learn, learn this. I mean, I've been tying for 30 years and I learned it. So, but anyway, that's a really cool trick, way of measuring wings. So now that we're done with the fly, let's get a closer look at this killer, killer sp spinner pad. I'm glad you guys all stayed here to the end of the video and uh, if you haven't subscribed you like this video make sure you do and if you like it 
give it a thumbs up and make sure you leave comments or questions down below if any have any questions about how to tie this fly or anything like that make sure you leave a comment below or question and uh, this is a fly that we here again we looked it up looked it up and looked it up and looked it up and no one had a tying video on how to tie a, a blue quill uh, uh, sp spinner they just nothing well last year a buddy of mine which you all might know Bruce from Penn's Creek Angler I'll probably I'll put a link if I don't please don't forget but I'll put a link down below where you can check out his if you're from the area check him out he's pretty cool and you stop by his shop he has a really cool shop he sells rods sells all kinds of tying stuff but you want to check him out anyway point being is I tied a rusty uh, spinner and he gave me one of his and he said uh, look man he says, you got to try this organza. So he gave me the wing was made of organza. And I tried it. And I caught more fish with the organza wing than I did the earlier before that with the regular, I think I was using that floating yarn. So that, it worked out really well. So I'm going to use it on the representing the wings on all my uh, spinners because it, it really works so I recommend you use these organza on your spinner wings uh, the tail material you can make out of different stuff uh, micro filaments and all that stuff but the organza wing as the main wing part really works so I'm glad you guys all stayed to the end of that I hope you like them tricks um, this is the end of our blue quills I think next is uh, Hendrickson well, let me tell you what. Let's go check that out right here. Okay, you can see here that we got the blue quill. So the next one is blue quill, Gordon, and the Hendrickson. And uh, we'll get covering all them, the nymphs and everything. So that's next. Look forward to that on Monday. So, because tomorrow we're doing a live stream. We're not doing a regular time video. We're just going to do a live stream at 5. So... There we have all that. So and you can see when the blue quill came out, it went out. The, it came on with a trout lily, granum's caddisfly, skunk cabbage, and the first colfort, the little blue winged olive. And they are the flowers, and they are better than dates um, to tell when these hatches come out because if it stays warm, uh, the flower is delayed. It's just like the hatch. So. There you go. That's but that's for uh, a creek around here. I think that's a Penn's Creek hatch chart. So anyway, so now we can do with that is pause it on that uh, hatch chart and screenshot it and save a copy of that, or send me an email. The email is I'll put it right here. Everything fly fishing YouTube at yahoo.com and you can put that send me an email and I'll send you that hatch chart all right so if anybody wants that you can do that and uh, and it tells you the flowers for everything and I'm, like I said that's a very be way better than dates because if it stays too warm or it gets, stays cold too long and that flower is put off the hatch will be put off too because even your weather affects when the hatches happen I mean, all the dates in the world. Sometimes I've seen Hendrickson's come off way earlier than dates, they said, because it got warm and it stayed warm real early. And so your hatches are put early. So there's the flower. So thank you guys all for being here. And uh, see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock for the live stream. And if you don't there for that, I'll see you Monday for another tying video. Like we said, video every day. Keep your lines wet, out of the tree, and only give them fish a sore